Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, please consider subscribing and commenting, sharing, and liking the video so that way we can bring more aviators closer and closer in the community. Today I'm going to go over the Private Pilot ACS. This is going to be a mock oral. I'm going to speak from a experience standpoint. I just took my check ride two months ago and I have a few friends that I continuously talk to who tell me and fill me in exactly what they get asked on their check rides. So take it from me, a private pilot who just took their oral exam. I have actually categorized the ACS and put together some questions that your examiner may ask you. I'm going to give you the concept because the actual situational testing requirements are going to be, they're going to be different for everybody. So we're going to just go ahead and get started, not waste any more time. Again, if this is your first time, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested, this is going to be a multi-part series. So stay tuned for the next parts. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So certification requirements. What are the eligibility requirements for a private pilot certificate? 14 CFR 61103 says you must be at least 17 years of age, be able to read, speak, and write the English language, hold at least a third class medical certificate, receive the required ground and flight training endorsements, and meet the applicable aeronautical experience requirements as well as pass your required knowledge tests. Your examiner may ask you to show that you are qualified and may want you to present these documents, all your hours and your endorsements. So make sure that you are organized and that you've tabbed out your logbook and that you know how to reference all of your flights and all of the training that you've done. What privileges and limitations apply to a private pilot? 14 CFR 61113, states no person who holds a private pilot certificate may act as a pilot in command of an aircraft that is carrying passengers or property for compensation or hire. That person may not pay less than the pro rata share of the operating expenses of the flight with passengers, provided the expenses involve only fuel, oil, airport expenditures, and or rental fees. Your examiner may ask you to explain what does it mean to not pay less than the pro rata share of the operating expenses of the flight. Again, 14 CFR 61.113 states that pro rata means proportional. The pilot may not pay less than his or her proportional share of the flight's operating expenses with the passengers, provided the expenses involve only fuel, oil, airport expenditures, and or rental fees. To act as a required pilot flight crew member of a physical aircraft, what must a pilot have in his or her possession readily accessible in the aircraft? 14 CFR 61.3 says that you must have a valid pilot certificate, a valid photo identification, and a medical certificate. Okay. Now, when it comes to the risk management sections of this, these are generally going to be situational questions. So you're going to get asked most likely about what is the difference between being current and being proficient. Being current means that the pilot has accomplished the minimum FA regulatory requirements within a specified time frame, meaning that you are legal to make a flight, not necessarily that you are proficient or competent to make that flight. Being proficient, on the other hand, means that the pilot is capable of conducting a flight with a high degree of competence. It means that you have a wide range of knowledge and skills, and being proficient is not just about being legal, it's about being smart and safe. Be sure that you understand and can explain that to your DPE, because he will most likely ask you about that. Flying unfamiliar airplanes are operating with unfamiliar flight display systems and avionics. Your examiner may ask you, you are current and you pass your check ride today in your 172. But your friend has an RV and he tells you that you're, you can go fly it as much as you want. You know, is that a competent yes, go or no go decision? With respect to certification privileges and limitations of airmen, describe the terms category, class, and type. 14 CFR Part 1 says that category is the broad classification of an aircraft, rotocraft, or a glider. 
A class is a classification of an aircraft within a category having similar operating characteristics like a single engine land, multi-engine land, single engine C, multi-engine C. A type of aircraft is a specific make and model. Take a Boeing 737, Boeing 787, Boeing 777. Let's move on to currency requirements. What are the requirements to remain current as a private pilot? Within the preceding 24 months, accomplish the flight review and receive the logbook endorsement that the person has satisfactorily completed the review. To carry passengers, a pilot must have made within the preceding 90 days three takeoffs and landings as the sole manipulator of flight controls of an aircraft of the same category and class and, if a type rating is required, of the same type. If the aircraft has a tailwheel, then the landings have to be made to a full stop. Again, if you're flying an aircraft with a tailwheel, the landings have to be to a full stop. If operations are to be conducted at night, which would be one hour after sunset or one hour before sunrise, with passengers on board, the PIC must have, within the preceding 90 days, made at least three takeoffs and three landings to a full stop in an aircraft with the same category, class, and type. You have not kept up with logging each of your recent flights. Are you in violation of any regulation? No, you're not. 14 CFR 6151 states that you are only required to document and record the training and aeronautical experience used to meet the requirement for a certificate, rating, or flight review, as well as the aeronautical experience required for meeting the recent flight experience requirements. That way you can prove that you are current. How will establishing a personal minimums checklist reduce risk? Well, pre-established numbers can make it a lot easier for you to come up with a competent go or no-go decision. Your examiner is going to want to see that you have a personal minimums checklist made. The FAA offers a document that you can go through or you can simply write them down and show them to your DPE during your check ride. How long is your medical certificate valid for? 14 CFR 6123 and Part 68 for basic med state that you must hold at least a third class medical certificate and the medical certificate expires at the end of the last day of the 60th month after the month of the date of examination shown on the certificate. If on the date of your most recent medical certi certificate examination, you were under the age of 40. Again, if you are under the age of 40, it will expire the 60th month after the month of the date of examination shown on the certificate. If you are over the age of 40, then it will be the 24th month after the month of the date of examination shown on the certificate. Please reference 14 CFR 6123 for more information. What requirements must be met to fly under basic med? Advisory Circular 68-1 says you must hold a current and valid U.S. driver's license, hold or have held a medical certificate issued by the FAA at any point after July 14, 2006, as well as complete an examination checklist, be cleared by your physical examinator, and take a basic med online medical education course. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the airworthiness requirements. What documents are required on board an aircraft prior to flight? 14 CFR 91203 and 91.9 says that you must have your airworthiness certificate, registration certificate, radio station license if you're operating outside of the U.S., operating limitations like your POH, and your weight and balance data. Make sure that it is current and that if anything has been done or manipulated in the aircraft, like avionics or seats, make sure that the weight and balance is current and correct. Compass deviation card per 14 CFR 231547. And your examiner may ask you questions about these documents. So be sure that you have these documents ready, able to show the examiner, and that you can understand and explain what each of these documents mean what they are for, when they expire, if they expire. What is an airworthiness certificate? An airworthiness certificate is issued by the FAA to 
an aircraft that has been proven to meet the minimum design and manufacturing requirements and is in condition for safe operation. Does an airworthiness certificate have an expiration date? No. A standard airworthiness certificate remains valid for as long as the aircraft meets its approved type design and is in, in a condition for safe operation. As long as the maintenance, preventative maintenance, and alterations are performed in accordance with parts 21, 43, and 91. Where must the airworthiness certificate be located? The certificate must be displayed at the cabin or cockpit entrance so that it is legible for passengers or crew. Who is responsible for ensuring the aircraft is maintained in an airworthy condition? The owner or operator of an aircraft is primarily responsible for maintaining an aircraft in an airworthy condition. What are airworthiness directives? ADs. An airworthiness directive is the medium by which the FAA notifies aircraft owners and other potentially interested persons of unsafe conditions that may exist because of design defects, maintenance, or other causes, and specifies the conditions of which the product may continue to be operated. Airworthiness directives are regulatory in nature and compliance is mandatory. Remember, airworthiness directives are not optional. You must comply with airworthiness directives. What are the two types of airworthiness directives? Airworthiness directives are divided into two categories, those of emergency nature requiring immediate compliance and those of less urgent nature requiring compliance within a specified period of time. What is an aircraft registration certificate? Before an aircraft can be flown legally, it must be registered with the FAA aircraft registry. The certificate of aircraft registration which is issued to the owner as evidence of registration must be carried in the aircraft at all times. Does the aircraft registration certificate have an expiration date? Yes, it does. 14 CFR 4731 and 4740 states that a certificate of aircraft registration issued in accordance with 14 CFR 4731 expires three years after the last day of the month of which it was issued. A temporary certification of registration is valid for no more than 90 days after the date the applicant signs the application. What are the required tests and inspections to be performed on the aircraft? Remember, aviate. You're going to need your annual inspection within the preceding 12 calendar months. This will be found on 14 CFR 91409. Airworthiness directives and life limited parts complied with as required. This will be on 14 CFR 91403 and 91417. Your VOR equipment check every 30 days for IFR operations. That will be in 14 CFR 91171. Your 100 hour inspection if used for hire or flight instruction. Your altimeter altitude reporting equipment and static pressure systems tested and inspected every 24 calendar months. This will also be in 91411. Your transponder tests and inspections every 24 calendar months, 14 CFR 91413. And your ELTs, operation and battery condition inspected every 12 calendar months. This will be in 14 CFR 91207. Make sure that on your check ride you have all of these documents readily accessible and that you're able to explain all of these documents, show that you understand what they are and when they expire. Your examiner may ask you. What is an annual inspection and which aircraft are required to have annual inspections? An annual inspection is a complete inspection of the aircraft and engine required by the regulations and is required to be accomplished every 12 calendar months on all certificated aircraft. Only an AMP technician holding an inspection authorization can conduct an annual inspection. What aircrafts are required to have 100 hour inspections? 14 CFR 91409 states that aircraft used for flight instruction for hire must be subject to the 100 hour inspection. If an aircraft is operated for hire, is it required to have a 100-hour inspection as well as an annual inspection? 14 CFR 91409 states, yes. If an aircraft is operated for hire, it must have a 100-hour inspection as well as an annual inspection when due. If not operated for hire, 
only an annual inspection is required. Be sure you are able to explain that to your examiner if your aircraft is rented for hire or if it is not. Can a pilot legally conduct flight operations with known inoperative equipment? Yes, under specific conditions, Part 91 describes an acceptable method for the operation of the aircraft under specific and certain inoperative instruments and equipment that are not essential for safe flight. Please reference your POH for your minimum equipment list authorized by 14 CFR 91113. And be sure that you can explain to your examiner what you need and don't need to fly the aircraft. Please make sure that you are familiar with 91213. What is an MEL list? The minimum equipment list is a precise listing of instruments, equipment, and procedures that allows an aircraft to be operated under specific conditions with inoperative equipment. What instruments and equipment are required for VFR day flight? 14 CFR 91205 states that for VFR flight during the day, the following equipment is required. Remember a tomato flames, your anti-collision light systems, tachometer, oil pressure gauge, manifold pressure gauge, altimeter, temperature gauge, oil temperature gauge, fuel gauge, flotation gear if required, landing gear position indicators, magnetic direction indicator, emergency locator transmitter, and seat belts. What instruments and equipment are required for VFR night flight? For VFR flight at night, all the instruments and equipment for VFR day flight are required, plus fuses, landing light, anti-collision light systems, position lights, and a source of electrical energy. Remember flaps, fuses, landing lights, anti-collision light system, position lights, and a source of ele- and a source of electrical energy. Describe preventative maintenance. 14 CFR Part 43 states that preventative maintenance means simple or minor preservation operations and the replacement of small standard parts not involving complex assembly operations. Certificated pilots, excluding student pilots, sport pilots, and recreational pilots, may perform preventative maintenance on any aircraft that is owned or operated by them provided that the aircraft is not used in air carrier service. Be sure that you know where to look at the regulation for the items that are approved for preventative maintenance. You will find this in Part 43, Appendix A, Paragraph C. That should have covered everything for the first two pages of the Private Pilot ACS. If you guys have any more questions about any of these, please comment down below. Again, remember that your checkride will be situational, so be able to apply all of this knowledge into the situational concepts given to you on your checkride. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will be making a part two soon. Thanks for watching.